All right, so the Spurs and Lakers just wrapped up a very entertaining first game of the end season tournament for both squads. Massive game from Anthony Davis, who just continues his MVP run. I think as things stand right now, he is number one in that conversation tonight here against San Antonio. 40 points, 12 rebounds on 14 for 26 from the floor and two for four from the three-point line to go along with two blocked shots. This is such a great point in Anthony Davis's career because we've kind of been waiting for Anthony Davis to finally make that leap where we considered him a flat-out MVP frontrunner, right? And possibly considered him as one of the three best players in the NBA. Now, as far as the latter, I'm not not sure if we're there just yet there are a lot of moving pieces when it comes to that but with ad looking at him early in his career with the pelicans hornets whatever you want to call him during that time there is this anticipation that he will be a guy that we consider as the number one player in the league at some point in time elite level defensive player super versatile from an offensive standpoint as a power forward with the ability to shoot both from the three-point line and from the mid-range area extremely athletic all of those things we looked at that skill set and it really seemed undeniable that at some point he would grow into probably the number one number two or number three player in this league goes over to the lakers and in his first season I think he got there, right? In his first season, he averages 26 points per game and helps lead the Lakers to the NBA Finals, their first and only title of the LeBron era. At that point, to me, it was very easy to say that Anthony Davis was a top three player in the world. He was better than Giannis at that point. He was better than Nikola Jokic at that point. He was better than Joel Embiid at that point in time. They're like a small handful of players who at that point, I thought were better than Anthony Davis. He was playing at a level where he finally reached that number one, number two, number three level status, right? Like he finally was comfortably in that conversation. Then we kind of get to the last couple of years with the Lakers, and he's still great, still putting up all-star numbers, still very productive, but it's very clear that he's no longer in there. So there was a little bit of a fall off by Anthony Davis. Like in between the time of him winning that title in 2020 up to now, Giannis wins his championship, right? Nikola Jokic wins a championship. And those guys kind of push him out of that top five a little bit and move him away from that conversation. So we've been waiting for AD to get back to that level. And again, that's not downing what he was doing in between that time and now because he has been putting up very, very good numbers. AD is still an all-star, all-NBA caliber player, but his potential and his skill set suggest that he could end up being in best player in the world conversations. And there was just a lengthy period of time where that didn't seem to be the case anymore, right? As I said, a lot of guys seem to kind of take over uh, his spot in that particular conversation with Jokic, maybe you throw Joel Embiid in there with the ridiculous scoring seasons he was having, and obviously Giannis to the Kumbo, especially after he won his first championship in 2021. Coming into this season, Anthony Davis has returned to that level where we can start considering him again as a top three guy in the league. 30 point per game season for the first time in his career. Now, this is a very, very small sample size, right? It's just a handful of games. I think the Lakers just reached uh, like a double digit amount of games on the season. I have to go back and check and see what their record actually is. I think they're around 12 or 13 games so far this season. So they're at a pretty decent spot as things stand. But through this point, 80, 30 points per game, 11 rebounds, efficient shooting from three, knocking down 40% of his three-point shots now that is just on two attempts per game. But he's doing a good job at playing two with strengths, right? So 80's playing the five. And there was this major debate over the last couple of years as to whether or not AD is optimized at that particular position. Obviously for him, he preferred to play the four a lot more here and there. Since being here at the five, and it's not just this season, but also last season, and we saw it in some glimpses over the last couple of seasons, he has played at a ridiculously high level. He has been so dominant, again, playing to his strengths, getting to his spots on a consistent basis. And the defense, he is such an amazing defensive presence we all know what the conversation was last season uh he felt that he was defensive player of the year now as far as how i felt with that i wasn't in favor of him being a favorite for that award especially because the lakers struggled as a defensive team and it's tough to be defensive player of the year if you're not on an elite level defensive team now if we think about that 
and apply that same logic to this season, then we can say the exact same thing. The Lakers have not been an amazing defensive squad this season. Their biggest strength has been their offense. They're also giving up a ton of points in the paint. So you could use that same argument you used last season to say AD is in the deep boy. You could use that same argument this particular season. Like I'm seeing a lot of people online saying that Anthony Davis has returned to being the best two-way player in basketball, and he is the defensive player of the year right now. If your logic last season was that AD couldn't be the defensive player of the year because the Lakers collectively were not a great defensive team, then that could be your logic this particular season. And you'd have to probably give it to a guy on one of the best defensive groups right now across the entire league, maybe like the Celtics or something like that. So that's one thing I have about Anthony Davis and the Depoy conversations is if you were on the boat that 80 shouldn't have been Depoy because of the Lakers team defense last season, you should be on the same boat right now. But still, that doesn't mean he's not a great individual defender. Individually, he has done an amazing job. Just amazing seeing him produce at such a high level and get back to this MVP level that we have not seen him at really since 2020. Amazing stuff here from AD. As far as the Lakers as a whole, JJ Redick has done a pretty good job. There was like a spot or a start during the season or, or a stretch during the season where things were a little bit rocky, right? And I hope this win kind of gets them back on track. It is the in season tournament. And if they're able to get deep in the in season tournament, in season tournament again, uh, that'll be a major rhythm establisher for them for the remainder of the season but I love the way he's running things one thing I also really love is his trust in the younger guys so Dalton Connect being a rookie and starting right and also utilizing Max Christie and having him in the lineup a lot Chris Coloco having him in the lineup uh here tonight against San Antonio and really sprinkled here throughout the entirety of the season Cam Reddish is a couple years into the league but utilizing Cam Reddish who was still relatively a younger player, I guess, but utilizing him, having him out there on the court. I love that JJ Redick relies heavily upon like the non vets and those guys do a great job at coming in and playing at a very, very high level. And we saw it here tonight. Max Christie had a really good first half. Don't connect amazing in this game. I think he had around 14 points and is so good with playing his role and playing within that offense. I love the way JJ Redick has structured things. And as I said, everything is really revolved around the play of Anthony Davis. And what's so unique, and I said this on a video a couple of days ago, this is the first time on a LeBron James team where we didn't look at LeBron James as the best player, right? Or the first time on a LeBron James led team where LeBron wasn't in the MVP conversation. It was somebody else. It's the first time. Like There have been years where LeBron probably wasn't top five in the MVP conversation over the last couple of seasons, but most of the time, it's not like he's not in it and somebody else on his team is. This is the first time where LeBron isn't in the conversation and someone else is. And I'm not trying to divide up the Lakers or anything like that, but it's the first time where somebody else on the Lakers was so good and so dominant that LeBron wasn't looked at as the guy that, that the team revolved around. Now, I am going to say this. That doesn't matter because this Lakers offense is built to win games where LeBron can score 13 points and they can still have an amazing night. So looking at games like tonight or some games that they've had throughout the season so far where LeBron wasn't dominant as a score and did a good job maybe rebounding and distributing and doing other things, this team is built to be really good if LeBron is having like these mediocre scoring nights, which is rare still, but they're built to do that. I'm not trying to divide AD and LeBron up here, but just pointing out, this is the first time we've seen a LeBron James team not have LeBron as the leading MVP candidate on the squad and it being somebody else. It's the first time. We can't name another time where somebody was so good that they were the massive and the main topic of conversation for the team other than LeBron James, right? And I think that speaks more to how much Anthony Davis has stepped up this season and has played at that MVP level. It's not about LeBron James playing worse, right? It's not about them not needing LeBron anymore. It speaks to how well AD has grown into this role as a franchise cornerstone, right? And he's always been that type of guy, but there was a question at one point where you were like, can Anthony Davis can he actually be a number one on a championship contender? Like, I know those are cliche questions to ask, but that's a question, right? Can you build a contender around Anthony Davis? And what he's done this season 
is showing that, right? Like in 2020, yes, they won a championship, but LeBron was also playing at a high level. That was one of the most underrated seasons of LeBron's career. And he was still the finals MVP of that particular team. It wasn't Anthony Davis. It was LeBron James. This is the first time where AD has stepped up and has been the guy here for the squad. First time we've seen it. Um, and like I said, it's not just him. It's a team game and it's a team sport. The other guys have played at a very high level. They're really playing their roles well on the offensive end. But just pointing out, AD has been so good that it's the first time I've watched a LeBron James team where LeBron was not the guy. You know, he's still the guy, still playing at a ridiculously high level at this age. But Anthony Davis' play has been so good. Uh, he's finally stepped into this role as probably the Lakers go-to scoring option and not even that because the Lakers offense runs so well late in games they have one of the best offensive ratings in clutch moments this season where it's not like one guy is getting it and he's cooking down the stretch they run a great offense they're worried about just going and getting a really good shot they ran an amazing set late in that fourth quarter to get LeBron a layup off like a cut down the middle of the floor uh, to to kind of push the lead up a bit. So that's the way the Lakers offense is built. It's not built around one guy going around and dominating, but still love seeing AD step into this role and play this dominant style of basketball. And I'm very excited to see how the rest of the season fares out for him as he continues to make the biggest run for the MVP award in his NBA career.